John Garrett was just explaining Steve Armitage. First time Steve did play-by-play -play for Hockey Night in Canada. His counter analyst right there, John Garrett. So, yes. John Shortos, John Garrett, Scott Oak, over to you for After Hours. Enjoy, everyone. Ron, thank you very much. Yes, we've been looking forward to this After Hours as we get a chance to uh, honor John Garrett's two decades as Canucks TV <laughs> analyst, although we should point out that John is not retiring from broadcasting. No, just no, I'm going to be around. Yes. Uh, I'm going to be around. Just leaving Canucks TV. So, Shorty, Cheech, and Murph have been synonymous with Canucks broadcast. We're delighted to have John Shorthouse with us. And Dan Murphy will sit in, we hope, momentarily, as he's just finishing up filing stories for Sportsnet. They love you, Cheech. There you nice. go. They love, the crowd. they love you. Yes, that's nice. Uh, Everybody's yes. got a story. And everybody loves the story. Yes. You got a few? Oh, I got a few. Right. I've got a few. <laughs> okay, Shorty, start the proceedings. Okay, well, uh, I think it's fair to say that we have a ton of memories together uh, through the years, and a lot of them, I think the synonymous thing with each story is the presence of beer. Yes, yes. And so I, I've <laughs> been asked, like, what are your favorite memories? And I think oh, I know. the tour, and, you know, I hope we're not disrespecting Kid Rock and Travis Tripp, <laughs> but the tour we took of the Anheuser-Busch compound, in St. Louis, uh, that was a great day. That was one of my yeah, favorite memories. Neil and that's my favorite picture. Neil Komodowski, who was a scout for the Vancouver Canucks, uh, his dad was a manager there. And uh, so we got the uh, private tour. Yeah. It was unbelievable. We had samples right out of the vats, Bud Lights in St. Right Louis. Right out of the vat. And we saw the, the, how they bottle the things in millions of bottles all the time. It, I, it, well, it was just, it was amazing. And Cheech, I want you to have this for your desk in your oh, office. Thank you. I had this thank made you. up because it's my thank favorite you. picture of the two of us. I know. It's mine too. That, that, that is very nice. And you can see <laughs> that there. It's, uh, and those aren't MAGA hats. No, those they're are Budweiser hats. Budweiser <laughs> Budweiser you know, hats. of all the things that you've accomplished in your life, uh, why would a tour of the Anheuser-Busch Brewing Facility it was a bad season. make it was such a bad an impact? Uh, go figure. Uh, you and Murph ran some stories with Cheech during some recent yes. Sportsnet Pacific broadcasts. Uh, I'd like a reprise of one, and it is about <laughs> the hot dogs in the pad in Quebec City. Yes, uh, I was playing for the Nordiques, and Dan Bouchard was the other goaltender. And uh, you remember the old Colise, eh? of course, where yeah. the home team came out and he came through the tunnel, and uh, you could see the spare goalie sat behind everybody. And there was no cameras or anything. So uh, Rene Lacasse, who was the trainer at the time for the Nordiques, uh, he used to, in between periods, in a game where I knew I wasn't going to go in, it was 2-1 in the game. And I, so he's got a hot dog, and I've got the hot dog going. And, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Dan Bouchard, who yeah. you know Dan Bouchard. Of course, what too. did he do, yeah. Cheech? What did he pull? Well, he didn't pull anything. I he, he, pulled just, <laughs> he, he pulled the shoot. He pulled the shoot. He did pull the shoot because <laughs> he didn't like the way the defenseman played a two-on-one. So he just came charging off, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, Dan, well, it's two-two, and you're, and so he just charged by me. So I'm, I'm trying to pretend like I'm doing my pads up and everything. So stick the hot dog down my pads, and out I go. And there it stays. Yeah, there it stays. My, my favorite part of the story, though, is after the game. They lose, <laughs> and and John has to sit in his stall and look all disconsolate because. Yes. But he's really just waiting till everybody leaves so he can take the hot dog out. That was a good mask too, the Nordique mask. Uh, uh, that was a good mask. I think uh, we have found a gem here. Um, you were drafted by uh, St. Louis in yes. 1971. They traded you to Chicago, where yes. Tony O owned the net, so you weren't going to yes. play a lot there. Gary Smith was right. the other guy. And so in 1973. <laughs> You signed with the WHA Minnesota Fighting Saints. Yes. You had just signed Harry Neal yes. as head coach. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is video gold. Well, we have with us now John Garrett, the goaltender I was speaking about before. Uh, John was uh, an outstanding goalie in the Ontario Hockey Association with Peterborough and lately from the Chicago organization. Uh, John, it might be interesting for our uh, fans to uh, know something about the, the style of uh, goaltending that, uh, that you have. Uh, could you comment on that? Yes, Harry. Uh, I like to think of myself as a stand-up goalie. Uh, I think to be a flop goalie as such, you have to be at least six feet tall, and I'm about 5'8", so I try to style myself after somebody like Jill Vilmure or Roger Crozier. So, yes, uh, yeah, too, yeah. too short to friends. be a flop goaltender, as you put it. Uh, <laughs> look, there well, there's <laughs> Harry Neal. He was the coach of the team. So budget-conscious Minnesota Fighting Saints that folded a few years later. Yeah. Here's a head coach doing interviews to a new yeah. player. That, that there was... are many ways uh, to describe that piece of video. First of all, did you rent the tuxedo for that interview? <laughs> that was my one and only suit, the bow tie. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> to think they both went on to, like, really good broadcasting careers, right? <laughs> uh, we have a couple of video messages. 
messages here tonight. Uh, so, Shorty, introduce the first one. Okay, well, John, you'll remember uh, quite vividly when Tom Larshide uh, <laughs> stepped aside and the tribute we paid to yes. him. You paid money to go to a concert, and yes. I wound up singing at it. Oh, I know. With Michael Bublé, but Bublé is a huge Canucks fan, as you know, a yes. huge fan of yours, and he wanted to share this. Hey, John, for over two decades, Vancouver Canuck fans have been blessed to have the greatest in the business. Take us through the best of times and the worst of times. You were always one of my favorite destinations. I want to thank you on behalf of all of us for guiding us the way you have. I'm sure the rest of this story is going to be amazing. We can't wait to see what follows. But uh, today, on behalf of all Canuck fans, I just want to say thank you, brother. And I uh, want to pour one out for my homie. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And, and Sharon was so bitter. That, oh, wait, uh, no, wait, no. <laughs> I think we... Michael's wife said to him, you're going to clean you're that gonna up. Clean yeah, you're going to clean that <laughs> <laughs> My wife was so bitter that, uh, <laughs> well, look at this. What do we look got? Look at this. We, we, Ooh, oh, chicken oh, wings. chicken wings. wings. <laughs> and, ketchup. Uh, and I do put ketchup. No, not no, that often. That I, yeah, I don't usually put ketchup on chicken wings. Who knew ketchup was going to be such a factor in your life? And it's very creative of Michael to work it into <laughs> yes. that message. Is it true you gave up ketchup for Lent? Once? Oh, I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, and I... It, it killed me. It really did. Uh, my diet, I bet I lost 10 pounds that Lent just because I couldn't eat regular food because I always put ketchup on regular food. Couldn't so eat regular was, food. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon was so <laughs> bitter. That Michael Buble concert. Here we are. We, pay, we paid the top dollar, Michael Buble. Yeah, of course. And uh, all of a sudden, the concert stops, and, and here's Shorty coming out. We paid to watch Michael Bublé, and here's yeah, Shorty. Not sing. Shorty to sing. Yeah. Memories, or, but he did a great job. Thank uh, you. you grew up in Trenton, which yes. is two hours east of Toronto. So as a kid growing up there, uh, Dave Keon was starring for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And yes. uh, you had a chance to be his teammate with the Minnesota Fighting Saints in 1975-76 and later with Hartford. So yes. uh, the own goal story, please. <laughs> well, uh, as everyone knows, Dave was great on the face-offs. And... Uh, he he was there and look at the look at the picture you got. I'm not even in the picture. No, you're not in that picture because you <laughs> played 50, you started 58 <laughs> times for the Fighting Saints that year, but they traded you late in the season to the Toronto Toros. But you were really their goaltender. Uh, uh, that's Louis Levis, sir. Yeah, yeah. And, and anyway, uh, Dave is taking a face off in in our zone, and he was so good, and he's he's taking this it, with Hartford, right? Hartford, yeah. and he's pulling it on the back end. So he, he catches one clean, goes right over my shoulder. <laughs> and so the next face-off, he comes back in. Uh, he looks at me, he goes, stops the face-off beside, and he looks back at me and he goes, are you ready? <laughs> we used to, I used to drive with Dave to the uh, airport together, and I had an old uh, station wagon, and he called it the Roach Coach. And I, I would, can you imagine? There's Hockey Hall of Famer Dave Keon and I driving to the Hartford Airport. It makes sense for somebody named Cheech. Yeah, in yeah. the Roach Coach. <laughs> Another video message, this one with civic overtones. It's his worship, uh, the mayor of Vancouver. Hey, John. It's Ken Sim from Vancouver. Now, most people know me as Shorty's buddy from Churchill High School. Go Bulldogs. Anyways, like most Vancouverites, I'm a huge fan of yours. I've been a fan of yours since that puck hog Wayne Gretzky robbed you of the 1983 NHL All-Star Game MVP award. Now, we tried to reach out to Wayne to reclaim that Pontiac Firebird for you, but we actually don't have his number. So instead, we decided to proclaim May the 10th, 2023, John Garrett Day in the city of Vancouver. Thanks for being awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Well, John yeah, Garrett Day has, to, John has Garrett to include Day. a parade down Georgia, I think. <laughs> Yes. So you got to be here on May 10th. You, yeah, you can't go yeah. in. I checked. The Blue Jays aren't in Seattle. Oh, uh, no. That's right. <laughs> Chris Lee asks, what do we have to do to get the NHL to recognize Cheech's second assist on Gordie Howe's last goal? Oh, I know. I know. I should have. And I actually played it. It wasn't here. There. There's a pass. That's a hard pass. Mark takes it. Mark gives it to Gordie. Gordie scores this beautiful goal. How can I not get an assist on that? And I, I phoned when Benny Ercolani was, <laughs> Benny Ercolani is now retired, but Benny was the uh, statistician for the league. Look at this. That's a pass. Yeah. And I, I'm not a puck handler or by any stretch of anybody's imagination. 
I should have got an assist on that. Never did. And the score ended up, you can see it's the Montreal Canadiens. They, I think they beat us 7-2 or something. And uh, so I wasn't going to complain after the game that, come on, I missed this. I let in seven. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, years on. later, you, you should have complained. And in fact, your producer, Greg Shannon, started a hashtag some yes. years back called Give It to Cheech. And yes. it didn't quite work didn't out. Quite Dan Murphy up. joins us now. Uh, get to uh, Dan in one second. But first, Shorty set up the 83 All-Star Game at Nassau County Coliseum. Well, I was just a young fan at the time. Um, I know so much about this game because Cheech talks about it incessantly. <laughs> I know Laura Branigan sang the national anthem. Yes. Uh, but uh, the Canucks were in uh, Toronto, right? Yes. And uh, yes. The, you'd just been acquired. Yep. And Dan Daou hit Richard Brodeur in the ear with a puck, and he was supposed to go to the All-Star Game. So you got to go. I did. Uh, they had it on a Tuesday. I played uh, on a Sunday for the Canucks. I played one game for them, and then all of a sudden I was in the All-Star game. And, and you were going to win the MVP. I would have. I would have. Yeah. I would have. And then this guy, this unknown guy wearing number 99, got four goals <laughs> in four consecutive shifts. And uh, I continued driving my Nissan Micra instead of a Firebird. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it true that they actually had voted you the, player, yes. the, the most yes. valuable yes. player of the game, and they re-voted when he scored his fourth goal? That's when, it. When they, the great one scored that's it. That's it. Yeah. And uh, Ooh. it was Ooh. the reporters who were voting on it, so they came to me after the game. I don't know whether to rub it in or not, but they came to me and said, you would have won the car. You would have won the car. See, yeah. stolen elections go back a long way. Yeah. <laughs> Murph, uh, a piece of video that you uh, shared with me earlier this week, and I'll leave it to you to set it up. Mario Lemieux's home debut <laughs> with the Pittsburgh Penguins in 1984. Yes, and uh, Mario gets into it in the corner uh, with uh, Gary Lupo, I believe it was. Yes. And... Um, John Garrett had seen enough and comes into the rescue at, and, and goes Garrett. on to, to beak Mario that he was not going to make it in the league. <laughs> well, this was unbelievable. And Mario's first game and oh, uh, Gary Lupo, yeah, there, there I come in. Yeah. Gary Lupo's my size. So I come diving over the top rope and uh, then I'm giving it to Mario. I get thrown out for being the third man in. And you were third man in. I was. I was, was definitely the third man in. <laughs> and uh, well, so what did, what did you say Mario? to Mario? Though? Oh, I said, hey, Mario, you'll never make it. Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can score a thousand points in the Quebec League. You'll never make it. You're nothing but a big goon. Oh. Well, I guess I. I, guess I had that well, Mario had a hundred points that season, yeah, and know. nine times after that, including 199 in 80, 89. So you, you misjudge. Uh, like every time we see each other, he, he laughs about it with me. So that's good. Uh, Cheech is your go-to moniker, but what about Lotto? Well, uh, the Patty O'Neill. Mm -hmm. uh, Long-time trainer for the Canucks. He, he came up with that one. The, the last year that I played, and I hardly played at all, mm -hmm. uh, but it just happened. Couldn't I play a couple more minutes? Or couldn't I let in one more goal? But no, no, no. It ends up, guess what my average is on this great year. Oh, there it is, 649. Uh, there it is, 649. <laughs> so Patty O'Neill, it was the only one that really picked up on it. So he started calling me Lotto, thought it was great fun. And, and then, oh, come on. <laughs> the trainers, let me play five more minutes. The trainers have the best nicknames, and especially for the doctors through the years. There's oh. Doc Holiday because he only went to the games in the Sunshine State. And <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they, they got all the good nicknames. <laughs> uh, question from Patrick Johnson, who, by the way, covers the Canucks for the province. Uh, Please, a full accounting of your thrilling days as Canucks assistant GM, <laughs> which takes us to this card, yes. uh, one of the most unique of any cards. Oh, they're actually worth something because there wasn't a whole lot of them made. Harry Neal, I had one year left on my contract, and he said, well, okay, I need an assistant general manager, and I'd known Harry for a long time, Minnesota Fighting Saints days. And he said, uh, would you consider being the assistant general manager? And I said, yeah, that would be great. And we'd uh, talk about the contract then. He goes, that is, unless I get fired before then. <laughs> Which he did. Sure enough, yeah. he got fired before that summer, and so that card is a collector's item. Th this card, by the way, belongs to Terry Buck, one of our producers, mm -hmm. and I think he paid two dollars for it and one dollar shipping, so three bucks. Oh, three bucks! That's yeah. what I said. It's worth something. <laughs> All my other ones are worth about thirty-five cents. So when Harry was fired, there went uh, your career in management. And yes. It was on to Hockey Night in Canada, where you very quickly distinguished <laughs> yourself, and that leads us to the long list of play-by-play -play commentators yes. you have worked with. There it is. How long is it? 40. 40. There, there is Harner Ryan Singh was number 40. I tried to go chronologically when I was uh, – somebody asked me one 
day, can you remember all the play-by-play -play guys you worked with? And I said, well, I think I can. And uh, I went back and I, I started. And uh, you look at uh, Don Whitman was one of the great guys. You know, Don, well, you knew Don yeah. very well. He passed away, uh, mm -hmm. cancer victim, as so many other people are. Uh, but he was so kind and, and so generous and a veteran guy. And I was just thrilled to be working with Don Whitman. And then it continued on. And uh, we did playoffs. <laughs> we had one playoff series I remember very well. Uh, Don and I and uh, Steve Armitage. And it was Winnipeg and Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And the only places that were seen, because Toronto and Montreal were playing or something, the only places we were seen were Winnipeg, Vancouver, and Kenora. So we had, we had T-shirts made up, yeah. seen only in Kenora. And it was a yeah. three <laughs> Well, you know, Dale Howarchuk was often referred to by Craig Heisinger, assistant GM of the, uh, of the Jets, as hockey's lowest maintenance superstar. You, my friend, would be known as uh, <laughs> as hockey's lowest maintenance commentator, right, Chief Shorty? Yeah, well, totally. I mean, you'd agree with me, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's the thing about John. If we may get uh, you know <laughs> nice and stop it being a roast for a second, he he is a, the best teammate. Mm -hmm. He's all about everybody else, and he's never in a bad mood. <laughs> like he's just he's the most even keeled person, and he's always just thinking about us. I mm -hmm. think, and yep. I, it's, it just makes him the greatest teammate possible. The only time he doesn't think about us was when selected restaurants. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, so let's that's go we, fancy. We, yeah. we we defer to, to Cheech, <laughs> and that's something we've done over the years, and I, and you like it too. And I, but I, j I go back to we were in Chicago last year. Yeah. And I had to do something, so they said, okay, I said, why don't we go somewhere, you know, in Chicago, beautiful city. Well, we were originally going to go to TGI Fridays, right? And you said I no. Thought, no, oh. I thought it was going to be Mother Hubbard's. Oh, okay. A dive bar that serves <laughs> yes. it in plastic bowls like burgers. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm putting my foot down. We're not going to Mother Hubbard's tonight. Let's go something else. I get a phone call back from these guys about five minutes later. Okay, um, we'll meet you at uh, the che Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in just a few minutes, Murph, we're going to get uh, into uh, John's devotion to health food in greater detail. But uh, first, another video message from a diehard American fan. Shorty. Definitely a diehard American fan and somebody who has stayed up late with us through the years. Uh, his number one teams are New York teams, but his number two team, his adopted team, is the Canucks. And that's uh, noted sportscaster and political commentator Keith Olbermann. Yes. Political Cheech, comment. it's your friend, more importantly, your fan, Keith Olbermann. And I can't tell you how much I'm going to miss you on the broadcast. But on the other hand, I wish you all the happinesses in your post-Shorthouse career. Look at it this way. You will grow younger every day. Trust me. On the other hand, I do have this message from the Secretary of Commerce in the Biden administration. He's very worried now about the probable economic downturn this fall because you won't be here in the States buying hot dogs and beer at all of our American venues. So when the depression hits, just remember, it's all your fault. <laughs> all the best. Keith, job. of course, with a, a nice reference to your diet, uh, take care of your body, it'll take care of That's you, it. is your credo. Yes. So Murph, uh, you as the keeper of the Ketchup Chronicle should weigh in here. Well, really what people should know is that uh, it's usually uh, Shorthouse and Garrett going out for the lunches. He doesn't have a Twitter account, so he'll send me the pictures okay. and say, do you want to tweet this one out? So I am usually not with them, but I am just the person that passes on the pictures. And there's been some good videos of them ordering, uh, Cheech wearing, you know, Burger King There's hats. three different. Yeah. 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 Um, and they'll, yeah, there, there it go. is. Yeah. 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 And they'll go to, uh, they can give their burger rankings, but every uh, game day at lunch, <laughs> and they make sure to go about 11 o'clock so you, you miss the lunchtime rush because they don't like to wait in line. But we also walk, so we get our steps in. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, well, there's that. And I hope you have Diet Coke as well. Um, anyone you have ever worked with, John, including me, knows that your number one qualifier for a good meal is uh, no utensils. Yes, so, I tried to do uh, that. This comes from Colin and Planning. What are the top three road cities for foods that don't need utensils? Oh, you can find some place in every city that doesn't <laughs> sure need can. utensils. And usually around around the hotels, too. Even the good hotels. And we stay at the Ritz in a lot of places, the Ritz in Dallas. But you can always find some place that you don't need utensils. Has that Abtronic ever worked for <laughs> yeah, you? Abtronic. I haven't used the Abtronic in a while. I fell asleep with it on one time, and I ended up doing 10,000 sit-ups, and I had big burn marks on my stomach. And it, it was, yes, it's hard to believe I haven't that's used the Abtronic. That's you, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. me. Uh, 
Um, we've got to get this in. Uh, this is from, uh, well, you'll see. Uh, hey, Scott, longtime listener, first time caller. Can you ask Cheech why he intentionally jinxed my shutout streak that uh, one time versus Colorado? <laughs> Thanks. I'll hang up and listen. That's from Strombone. Strombone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Roberto Luongo. And, and it was uh, Patrick Waugh was the coach of Colorado at the time. And it was 3 nothing with two or three minutes left and all of a sudden Patrick is pulling the goaltend and I said on air I said the only reason he's pulling the goalie is for the shutout well let's listen here for a sec I didn't want to say it although the abs you get the puck in front of shop and again he scores gosh John Gary. here you go 7.1 seconds left and the abs are on the board oh, if you I can see him enough. right now folks he's in the fetal position uh, oh. Just slap me. Yeah, oh so, uh, Shorty, what no, side no. of Cheech's face did you pick? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I gave him both sides. I gave him a know. forehand and a backhand. And <laughs> he never did anything. Honestly, though, as a, as a member of the Goaltenders Union, I, I got to say, <laughs> I, I've never seen you look as nauseous as you did. Oh, after that I felt so bad. I felt, And you know, I'm not that superstitious, but when it comes to the goaltenders, uh, I do tend to <laughs> say, well, you can't say shut out. And you, there are certain things that you don't do. And, and you did it. And I did it. Oh, it How much awful. time we got? Paul? Oh, quickly then, uh, a few <laughs> seconds, John, for you to say a few words about the man who's made it easy for you in your two decades as the Canucks TV analyst, your producer, Greg Shannon. Well, Greg Shannon has been absolutely great, and he's so easy to talk to, and we get to communicate. Uh, we fly together. He He's my seatmate on the charter, and uh, Greg and I have known each other for a long, long time. It I goes back to the Sportsnet days, I think. There's, what's it called, your show that used to run the sports page. sports page days and uh he's just he'll listen to you and he's part of the team and i think that's what we've formed and that's what i'm going to miss the most about uh sportsnet pacific all the guys stewie lake has mm -hmm. been with us for a long long time uh dave trigovich who passed away there's another cancer victim mm -hmm. and but it's such a great team and greg is the leader of the team in the truck and I don't know a whole lot about the truck. I've been forced to I never to go near there, there either. <laughs> it's a dangerous place to go. Sportsman yeah. Pacific team has been absolutely great. Paul says we got to go. I can't yes. Go. Okay, and we're going to conclude with this tweet. This is representative of countless numbers that we got like it. Please, uh, this is from Sarah Law. Please tell him he's just leaving an indelible mark on Canucks Nations. His calls always came with great stories, little snippets that were unique to his voice, but mostly he's been an irreplaceable, irreplaceable part of the broadcast team and he will be missed. And we love nice him. Ending. Yeah, yeah. We love him. Our team. Yeah. Our team. All right. John, John Garrett from a colorful playing career to distinguished broadcasting career, which is not over yet. He'll be missed on Canucks Broadcast. Back in a moment.